and welcome to Peninsula Backstage, the show that looks inside local live theater and talks about upcoming productions that you can go see. I'm Nina Perry, and I'm your host. You're in Town, the Musical is a musical comedy that premiered in 2001 and won three Tony Awards in 2002, including Best Book of a Musical and Best Original Score. It has been described as a satire of, among other things, capitalism, bureaucracy, municipal politics, and even musical theater itself. Sunnyvale Community Players is performing You're in Town the Musical from October 26th through November 10th at the Sunnyvale Theater. Today on Peninsula Backstage, we'll start by talking with Thomas Times, director of You're in Town, Kyle Dayrit, assistant director, and Sylvia Chow, costume designer. And later we'll meet a couple of the actors involved with the production. Thomas, Kyle, and Sylvia, welcome to Ben and Slovak State. Hi, how are Thank you? Thank you for being here. So, Thomas, tell us about You're in Town. We should clarify the spelling of You're yes, in Town. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> U R I N E, town. Yep, You're in Town. <laughs> yeah, You're in Town is a great musical. It's about um, a town where that, for the past 20 years, they've been living through a drought. And to help solidify the badness, for lack of a better word, of the drought, a company called the UGC took over and they started putting a tax on peeing where that everyone has to pay to pee. And obviously people have quickly run out of money and now there's a group of people who are very poor and they are basically tired of having to pay to pee. So they are, they're done and they're making end of, they're getting rid of that. So, they're, so they yeah. have no toilets in their home. They have no toilets in their home. Okay. All the toilets, I mean, all private toilets are gone. And what's okay. left is public amenities where people have to wait in a long line. And they've got to pay to pee. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to ask you what happens when they don't pay because that's, that'll probably give some things away that we don't want to. <laughs> You'll find out. You have to come okay. through the show for that one. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, Kyle, you're the assistant director. Yes. Uh, how did you get involved with the project? Um, me and Thomas have worked on a few projects, especially on the acting side, over the past few years. Um, and while he was uh, applying to become the director for the show, he hit me up and said, like, hey, do you want to be my assistant director? I'd love to use you as another pair of eyes. Um, he has seen me as assistant director before under another uh, uh, director at Foothill. Mm -hmm. And I think he was like, you know, why not use him? And so he brought me along. <laughs> OK, OK. And uh, what excited you about this production? Had you seen it before? I have not seen it before. I've heard of it. And of like many other people, I'm like, you're in town. That sounds odd. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of turned me off originally. But then. Um, uh, he told me about it more and I listened to the soundtrack and I was like, this is a really good musical. Yeah. It's such a varying amount of tracks in terms of just genres of music and just, it blew my mind. I was like, yeah, I'm in. Let's okay. do it. Okay, great, yeah. great. Sylvia, how did you get on board? So, um, yeah, Thomas actually just reached out to me via Facebook. I don't know how he found me, but he did. <laughs> and um, when he reached out to me, I was actually on vacation. So we had a lot of phone calls where we talked about the show, um, but he just, I loved his vision for the show, and um, I was really excited to get on board. Yeah, great, great. So, Thomas, you've seen other productions of this? Actually, no. Oh, I've actually haven't? been okay. in two productions oh, of it. Okay. I've never actually seen the show, so I'm excited <laughs> to actually get to watch it. And I've seen it a lot. Okay. So, yeah, all right. All yeah. Right. Okay. So, so I've gotten um, to do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, how does your production with Sunnyvale Community Players differ from the productions that you've been in? So a lot of the productions I know of and have been in, they mm -hmm. set the show in like this weird, like either like 50s or 60s time period. Okay. But because we in California lived in a drought last year, I was like, so when I first heard that Sunnyvale was doing it, I was like, well, what if we switched it and made it that we set it in California and the drought that we had lived in, and I asked myself the question, what if the drought we lived in had never ended? What would our world look like 20 years from then? So basically what we did was we moved it to 2038. So we, so basically, what we're asked, what question we're asking ourselves with our production is, what would the barrier look like in 2038 if we had a massive drought that never really ended? And one of the questions I, and one of the ways I answered that question was, the tech corporations would take over. Mm -hmm. So instead of the UGC being this like big like money grabbing just random company, I was like, why not make it a tech organization? Because that's what's so prevalent in the Bay Area. So it's basically, and we're setting in East Palo Alto, which is in a really beautiful area because it's in the shadow of Palo Alto, which is a, like this really big tech heavy location where that there's so much wealth and everything. But you cross, you go, for lack of a better term, go across train tracks and you've got people that can barely afford to live right. in the shadow of all this richness. And I actually teach in East Palo Alto and I, I work with kids who 
grow up across from Facebook, across from Google, mm -hmm. but the likelihood of them ever being able to work there is so low that I was like, we have to tell their story. And You're in Town is a perfect way to tell their story. People who grow up in the shadow of wealth, but at the likelihood of them being able to reach that is extremely low, which is exactly what's happened to the people in the show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Great. Um, Sylvia, so tell mm -hmm. me how, how you approached the costumes for this show, given the content and the sort of the tone and the mood of it. Yeah, so it was really exciting to design something that's uh, like so close, and but also set 20 years into the future. Um, so uh, what I really wanted to get across in the costumes is kind of the difference between the rich people and the poor people. Um, the rich people, obviously, they have money, they have, you know, fashion has evolved, um, you know, in 20 years time. So, you know, they have a lot of bright colors and tailored pieces and um, just, really pieces that that are loud and stand out whereas the poor people you know they probably haven't had money to buy anything in these last 20 years the droughts been going on um, so most of their clothes is probably just things that they had or even things that are dumpster dived um, so we do a lot of like distressing we do a lot of like darker colors um, and almost a kind of like grunge industrial like almost punk aesthetic to it so yeah they kind of just like throw together whatever they, they can wear and make it their own Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you brought a couple of the costumes with you today. I so did. Do you want to talk about this a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So we have the costume for Officer Lockstock okay. and also um, Hope Cladwell over here, um, which you're going to meet the actors later. Okay. Um, for Officer Lockstock, he's the main police officer in the show. And I really wanted to kind of, you know, it still needs to be a recognizable police uniform, but I, I wanted to update it a little bit and make it a little bit cooler and more interesting. So we were looking a lot at motorcycle police, actually. So that's where yeah. kind of the leather jacket comes in. Um, and then for Hope, um, she's very much a character who's um, innocent, a little bit naive. Um, so I wanted to put her in light colors, kind of pastels, um, and She's also, she's from the rich part of town, so, you know, she does have kind of the nicer clothes um, with uh, interesting, like, details, like the, the pearl and the rhinestones on her collar and things like that. Yeah. Great, great. So, um, and Thomas, do you, did you collaborate with Sylvia on the costume? Yeah. Did you just let her go and do, do what she's We actually had a do? lot of conversations okay. in the beginning, and I, and I told her the concept, and, I, and um, we had, like, a bunch of coffee dates. We had a bunch of, like, phone conversations, and we kind of, we kind of talked about the play in itself. Then we talked a lot about what the, who the characters are individually. Mm -hmm. And then one day she brought me this beautiful set of mood boards that were like, this is everything I wanted in a Pinterest form. So it was wonderful. So at a certain point, I gave her the vision. She just started running with it and has basically really taken the thing we created and just ran with it in, co in terms of costumes. So, okay. And her work is amazing. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So Kyle, how do you and Thomas collaborate together as assistant director and director? Um, in the aspect, a lot of times he, uh, we have, like, say he's working on like some major parts he wants to work on with the big ensemble numbers. Mm -hmm. I would be set outside with a few of the uh, leads or people who need to work on lines. We do that sometimes. Um, he asks for my kind of opinion on things in terms of like the blocking is that right? I always kind of watch sight lines for him because mm -hmm. in that space it's very it's very uh, wide space proscenium, so it's very wide space. And so a lot of times we kind of at the very front two rows get kind of cut off sometimes because it's just it's a high end um, stage. And so a lot of times I'm doing that kind of stuff, a lot of technical okay. stuff on the end. Okay, great, great. And you're also one of the producers of the yes. show. So tell us about uh, that. What does that entail? Um, in that aspect, I do a lot of other things. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how should I describe it? Um, um, I did a lot of the, a few of the contract stuff um, okay. alongside with my other co-producer, co Barbara Moline, mm -hmm. um, in terms of just getting people, in, with alongside of uh, Thomas's help, getting people staffed, okay. making sure we get the, the technical stuff done, okay. uh, the set stuff. It comes to marketing, that was kind of me and Barbara kind of um, doing that together, uh, alongside doing like small stuff like doing the gala, getting, getting the gala ready, teachers, all pretty much everything in the background. Okay. The actors don't have to worry about. We Good. try to take care of as much as we can. He's actually <laughs> even helping build the set right now. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah he's doing a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> great, great, great. So um, our Peninsula Backstage field crew got to visit a rehearsal yeah. and um, got to see what was going on in the weeks before uh, an op the opening night, maybe mm -hmm. with three weeks before opening night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So we're going to uh, watch a clip from that visit in a oh. minute, and, and afterwards we will meet uh, uh, Officer Lockstock and Hope Cladwell, mm -hmm. the actors playing those characters. Uh, so we will 
Say thank you and goodbye to Kyle Dayrit and Sylvia Chow, uh, the assistant director and costume designer. Um, so is there anything you would like to tell us about this clip before we see it? I think both clips basically speak for themselves. Um, the first clip is the opening number of the show, and the second clip is when we first get to meet Mr. Cladwell, who runs the um, UGC, which is the main corporation that runs all the facilities and stuff in the town. Okay, yeah. great. Let's watch. Let's do it. I don't think he thinks that you're going to be coming up to interrupt him at this moment. So let's play that up a little bit more. So when she does that, let's see the fact that you're a little bit frazzled by this, but still you've got to remain in control. Yeah. And also you've got all these people watching you, and you've got all these people out there watching you. You're not going to let them see you. Slow. You understand it now, but nothing can kill a show like too much exposition. It's suffice to say, Sally, that in your own town, the musical, uh, people need to use public bathrooms in order to take care of their private business. It's the central conceit of the show. Hello, Senator. Uh, come to join your father's little operation. It's just a fax copy position, of course. First day. A fax copy girl, you say? Well, your father mentioned he was bringing on a new fax copy girl. He neglected, however, to mention how beautiful she'd be. Uh, uh, you'd be. You're so beautiful. Uh, even as a little girl, I always That's thought... enough, Pip. Well, goodbye. Let's meet the staff. Staff! <laughs> staff, this here's my daughter, and our newest fax coffee girl, Hope Cladwell. Bigger breath before you say meet the staff. So can we see you visibly shutting off what's happening with Finn? And then remembering, oh yeah, my daughter's here. Ooh, I got the next thing planned. Yes. <laughs> well, goodbye. <sighs> Let's meet the staff. <laughs> staff! <laughs> staff, this here's my daughter. And was fax copy girl. Oh, glad. Um, you guys have, you guys bubble with a sense of joy when you guys start singing on the Mr. Cladwell thing, when the, in the Mr. Cladwell song. We get that joy the minute the song starts, because right now it seems like you guys are like, okay, we're waiting, we're waiting. Now we're happy. Let's get the whole happiness, even if you're up there with your tablet, that's, that's the most joy you've ever had in your life. Mandatory <laughs> joy. Because Cladwell has told you this is the best day of your life, I need to see that the minute the song starts. <laughs> Gladwell. Hi. And Sam Natchison, who is playing Officer Lockstock. Hi. <laughs> welcome to Peninsula Backstage. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so you're welcome. So, Thomas, tell us about your philosophy regarding directing actors. So, being an actor myself, mm -hmm. I always like to think of working with actors as a collaboration. Mm -hmm. I come in with the vision, 
I cast people, and my job is to cast people that fit the roles to the best of their ability. And then after I cast them, I trust that we our work together lets them bring everything to a new level. And the wonderful thing about this show is I had visions of these characters, but everyone that I cast basically took that vision and just expanded on it. So like one thing that I really like to do is I like to sit down and really have character conversations. So mm -hmm. I got a chance to talk to mostly everyone in the cast. Um, we really got to talk about who those characters were, some things that I thought, some things that they thought. We really got to come up with a nice build on the character there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we just like really collaborated and worked together. And then these guys kind of took it and ran with it and made some really wonderful character choices. Great, you know, like great. even I weren't even thinking about. <laughs> okay. So it was great. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about some of these character yeah. choices. So Jessica, <laughs> yeah. tell us about Hope. Hope, um, she, as we heard earlier, is a bit naive. Yeah. And she comes from a wealthy family. Her father controls all of the public bathrooms. And so she's lived a very privileged life mm -hmm. and very sheltered. Um, and she just went away to school and is now coming back to come join her father's company. And she's very excited to kind of make her mark on the world mm -hmm. and also explore and see what else is out there. She was away from home for a few years, so she's kind of becoming a stronger person and trying to find where she fits in and how to make her mark. And so she's okay. stumbling around trying to do that. <laughs> And is that the situation as it is when she comes back, was that, uh, you know, has it, had it changed? You know, was it that way before she left? Or is she kind of group, has she grown up with the world the way it is? I think she's pretty much grown up with the world the way it is. Yeah. Um, and her father, I mean, he's a single dad. Mm -hmm. And she's only ever known him, but he obviously has um, his work self and his home self. So she hasn't seen a lot of his home self. Mm. Or, I'm sorry, his work self. Okay. Um, she knows her dad who she loves and adores admires mm -hmm. she, she she sees this very strong man who influences people you know and she wants to be just like him um but as she starts to work with him and sees a little bit more she starts to see that maybe not everything is as neat as she thought it might be mm -hmm. and so it's creating some conflict inside of her yes yeah. 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 cool <laughs> <laughs> so sam how about your character officer lockstock well, Officer Lockstock is a very interesting character, and he's very different than a lot of other characters in musicals in that he is a part of the show and the ensemble and the, and the story while also being the narrator. So he can move in and out of the storyline um, whenever he wants to, mm -hmm. basically, at the snap of a finger. He can uh, just d address the audience. So it's, it's very interesting to find who he is mm. in the show and who he is when he's talking to the audience. Um, so that was a really, really interesting journey. And as, as far as him as a character, he is uh, um, one of the uh, henchmen of uh, Hope's father. Okay. <clears throat> and one of the uh, police that works for the uh, UGC. Yeah. All right. Oh, OK. All right. So, um, what? How did you? How did you approach these roles? What sort of research or preparation did you do? You know, in addition to the conversations that you had with your director, you know, where. What reaches of, you know, <laughs> you know, in here or out there did you grab from to, to create your characters? I didn't do a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually did a ton of research. Okay. Um, this role has been my bucket list role for about 15 years. Um, ever since I heard of the album, um, this has been my dream role. Um, so I, I've been waiting <laughs> and preparing little bits and moments for a very long time okay. for this part. Yeah. I just feel like I relate to Hope in that she's quirky <laughs> and awkward and <laughs> very optimistic. Yeah. And so I just try and channel those extreme traits myself and maybe, you know, up the dial a little bit so yeah. that it works on stage. And I'm not exactly right. like Hope. I guess I should probably say that I'm not <laughs> exactly like Hope, just Hope ask. I'm Hope adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. And how is it being directed by a director who's also an actor? It's been really great. Yeah. I've really enjoyed <laughs> Thomas's vision for the show, and I've really enjoyed working with him. And I love that he gets in there and like has those conversations with you to help build your character. Um, so he lets you play, but he also will rein you in when necessary. Mm. If something's not working, he'll say, let's, let's try something different. 
And it's not that, hey, you failed. It's a, hey, how else can we approach this to make it work with the scene and the entire vision of the show? So it's been great to have his like insight as an actor, too. I'm going to say this. Yeah. I always heard the term that casting is 90% of the job, and I think I honestly got it with this show. The great thing was we didn't really have to do a lot of that, like, okay, we got to build this from the ground up. They came in at such a high level because they really fit the characters so well. So these guys really kind of just got it. So they made my job so much easier that I was like, you guys already got these characters. We can just, now we can just play <laughs> yeah. and figure out new stuff. Yeah. It's always been really, these guys are amazingly talented. Great. <laughs> so tell us, you know, we haven't talked you know, about the music directly. Tell us about the music. We saw a little of it in the clip. But uh, how would you characterize it? Um, the, the writers of the show, by the way, are Greg Kodis and mm -hmm. Mark Holman. Um, the music in the show is really unique because it makes fun of a lot of musical theater. So, like, for example, the Mr. Cladwell number that you guys just watched, mm -hmm. that one is actually making fun of that number in Annie, the You're Welcome Here, that number. So it's that type of, like, number. Then you've got a song, Look at the Sky, that basically makes fun of Les Mis. So they take hints from other musicals okay. and interact it and intertwine it into this story. So, and it's going to be really interesting to see what people, what hints of other musicals that they hear. So it's, it really isn't just one thing. It's like a, it's pulling of a bunch of different musical styles. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it's really cool. Great, yeah. great. And how did you both uh, prepare for for this, and in, in terms of in terms of the singing? I mean, did you approach this differently because of um, the allusions to other types of musicals, or is it pretty much the same process that you've done for other shows? For me, it's I think mostly the same process. Mm. Okay. I just one fun thing about Hope is she does have a couple different like styles that she sings. She okay. sings a little bit more legit. Um, classical musical theater in some moments, and then she has some more like belty, brassy, soulful mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. And so it's just making sure that I am prepared and warmed up to be versatile <laughs> <laughs> or try and be versatile <laughs> so I don't like hurt myself or sound, you know, weird, squeaky <laughs> any more than I'm supposed to sound. <laughs> I, uh, I think that the, the varying styles mm -hmm. and the fact that the styles of the music are so iconic mm -hmm. for especially us as musical theater actors, we love this stuff. Uh, I think that made it a lot easier okay. because it's like, oh, this song is making fun of this, so I'll go there. Right, right. You know, um, there's parts where I feel like um, Lockstock's music is a little Nathan Lane, mm -hmm. right? A very mm -hmm. over the top Broadway yeah. baritone. And so yeah. I was like, oh, I'll channel. Nathan Lane for this part, you know, and then there's there's other parts that channel other um, styles of musical theater. So I think that kind of made it a little easier because you know what you're getting into with the with the song. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, how? Wh what will the music a musical accompaniment be for the show? So we've actually got a six-piece band. Okay. And they are amazingly talented. We're actually doing our sits probe tonight. Okay. Yeah. And so that's where you get to rehearse yes, with the band. Yes, with the band for okay. the first time okay. with everybody. So it's going to be a six-piece band, okay. led by the wonderful Andy Jacobson. Jacobson. Okay. Jacobson. Yes. <laughs> and she's wonderful, and this, it's going to be, um, yeah, six people playing okay. their hearts out. It's going to be okay. great. And yeah. are the musicians going to be on stage, or is there a pit? There's a pit, so okay. they're going to be directly under okay. the stage. All right, yeah. all right. And what about ampl amplification? Are you guys just going to belt it, or are you going to be mic'd? Oh, I'm, we're going to be mic'd. Okay. okay. <laughs> mic'd. Yeah. There's so much going on in yes. some of the yeah. numbers that right. if we weren't mic'd, you would just hear this wall of sound, yeah. okay. ambiguous yeah. sound. <laughs> okay. And I'm so. sure, you know, the audience needs to hear the lyrics really yes. clearly in yeah. order to get oh, the full Yeah, it's a impact. really smart show. Yeah. The, you miss a lot if you're not paying attention yeah. to the lyrics of the yeah. songs because yeah. they're so witty. You need to see the show multiple times to yeah, really the, understand the everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And that is in, that, in, in the songs or in the, in the dialogue as well? Both. Both. Okay. Yes. Everything. <laughs> Every <laughs> moment of the show, there's a joke about something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you've got to really look for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, tell us a little bit about the performance space. It's the Sunnyvale Theater. Mm -hmm. So, what what kind of space is that? How big is it? How many rows? Or is it an intimate experience? Or like a big kind of? I feel Broadway like it's theater? a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, it's an intimate like it's experience fair. that feels big. Big. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 this theater's got this really cool layout where that they have these two alcove parts that basically lead directly into the steps where the audience would walk in. Okay. So it's immediately like a wall taken down between the audience and the show. Which can, and we play with that at times in the show too. So it's a really yeah kind of same. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's mm -hmm. it feel it's a big space that feels intimate. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a really beautiful space. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Great, great, great. So um, 
If there was one word that comes to mind when describing the show or that you want audiences to, to come away with after watching our show, mm -hmm. what would that be? Necessary. Necessary. Quirky. Quirky. <laughs> Exposition. Exposition. <laughs> okay, very good. Wow, great. So <laughs> I know I'm gonna I'm gonna let that sit. I'm yeah. processing that. <laughs> um, have you ever have you guys worked together before? The three of you? Or I've worked you? with Sam yeah, before, worked okay. before, but I'd never no, worked with no, Thomas. I've just done. seen yeah. him on stage. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I've seen them both on stage before, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, great. Yeah. And uh, does your previous collaboration make it easier to work together now or? More challenging. I mean, since we'd already known each other, yeah. there was that relationship there of like, oh, I'm comfortable with you. Yeah. You could do whatever. You can take headphones out of my ears awkwardly. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just kind of, it helps. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, not have any like weird like walls or uncertain boundaries up. Yeah. Um, okay. A lot of the, a lot of the lead uh, cast, the central cast, we all have done a lot of shows together. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so it's, it's really nice. It's sort of like a little family reunion coming together. And it's cool because they're not building, because a lot of times with shows you have to build like the group, but yeah. it helped that a lot of people knew each other already. So it's like, okay, we can get past the awkward knowing each other's stages right. and just really get to the, mm -hmm. right. keep building on the friendships and right. stuff, which is really great. Right, right. And that translates to just really strong ensemble yes. work from, from yes. my experience. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great. Cool. All right. Well, we have about a minute left, so we're going to recap for our viewers uh, that Sunnyvale Community Players is performing You're in Town, the musical mm -hmm. by Greg Codis and Mark Holman. Uh, from October 26th through November 10th at the Sunnyvale Theater in Sunnyvale. And Thomas, could you tell our viewers where they can go online to get more information about the show? To get more information for the show, they can go to sunnyvaleplayers.org. Okay, thank you. Sunnyvaleplayers.org. Mm -hmm. Peninsula Backstage is online also. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash peninsula hyphen backstage. Like our page if you're interested in getting updates when new episodes become available for viewing online and on the air. And thank you to our folks from Sunnyvale Community Players, Thomas Times, Jessica Ellithorpe, Sam Natchison, Kyle Darrett, and Sylvia Cho. And thank you to our viewers. We appreciate your watching this episode of Peninsula Backstage. And remember to go out and support local life here. Thank you. <laughs>